So welcome back to lesson number 83 of the Bioptimizers Healing Health and High Performance Program, your complete guide to biological optimization. And today we're going to talk about genetic testing the future of disease prevention and nutritional optimization. And boy, oh boy, is this a field that is expanding rapidly. Of course, you know, there's all these different things that's happening with mapping of the genome and looking at the DNA. And of course, the DNA, as we remind, is that little, that little device inside our cells that kind of tells us everything that's going on in the body, sends all the messages and stuff. And we've brought back today our testing expert, Katrine Valinsky, who you know, works with our bio-optimizer testing team. She's the head of the department kind of thing. And, and she kind of is on the cutting edge of you know, not only this test, but all kinds of tests. If you saw the other ones, I mean, she's amazing. But let's talk today. So welcome to the set. Thank you, Wade. So genetic testing, what is it? Where is it going? Why do we use it? I mean, so, this is such a broad field, well, I know. The, so. Yeah, that's, that's a huge topic. And obviously, like you said, it's the future. That's what we're going to be seeing more and more coming out. Uh, uh, right now, it's it's in its uh, beginning stage for um, normal con you know consumers. So it's been used for a while now with doctors and just as a research. But now we're seeing more and more different kits being available to test our own genetic sequences to see uh, not just you know where we came from, what our accessories and things like that, which can be actually very useful in determining your biological blueprint and how you know what kind of foods and things will be best for you and we'll talk about that later but it also um, looks at specific uh, it also tracks specific enzyme specific dna strands that can help us um, prevent a certain disease or see how uh, epigenomic uh, epigenetic testing and epigenetic changes can uh, turn and turn off uh, turn on and turn off certain genes and, uh, and have certain disease you know, come uh, come about or not. So it's 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 an important factor to look at from any for anybody, especially if somebody, let's say, having a child, because you can actually prevent certain issues with that child by certain supplementation and nutritional practices. Not prevent, but um, you know, make a huge difference on how those will manifest for the person that's going to be born. So, for example, wow, that's that's <laughs> know, a so lot. I, you know, so let's uh, let, we'll try and branch this down because. You know, it's an exciting field, but it's a, it can be a complex field as well. It's a very well. complex field. So let me see. So basically, you can take a, a couple of people. Like, who would take a genetic test? Like, who is this for? Well, anybody. Pretty much, uh, you know, most of the people that I work with, I usually require genetic testing just to see, again, you know, where they're coming from, what is their background, what's been going on for them uh, evolutionary. Because let's say a person that's coming from a northern region uh, is more adapt to uh, um, taking in um, dairy products or meat products than somebody that's grown up in the uh, south part of, you know, like equator, um, where this abundance of fruits and vegetables will make it easier for them to have a certain diet like this. So it's it's use, used for uh, dietary uh, predictions, what would be the best diet for, let's say, a person in question. And it's also used for um, uh, predictions, not predictions, but looking at methylation cycle, which is methylation cycle is extremely important by a path, uh, biochemical pathway in our body that is governing a lot of um, aspects like, such as DNA production and uh, detoxification of heavy metals and mood regulation and uh, gut health. It's all kind of uh, part of the huge uh, uh, methylation by a pathway. So it's important to know where uh, the inconsistencies are in that by a pathway where the DNA is not made be working properly and you're not getting the most out of your body uh, because of those uh, problems with DNA mutations. Okay, so are, now based on where we're seeing mutations happen a lot more, would, is like environmental factors, would that inf influence genetic expression? Well, genetic expression, of course, influenced by environmental factors, but lifestyle, by your diet, by everything that you're taking, and that's why the field of epigenetics is becoming more and more profound because we can really uh, see how the body can uh, turn on and turn off the genes based on the environment that is being placed in or you know, for extended periods of time and the kind of lifestyle the person is leading. So um, <clears throat> the uh, DNA uh, testing when it's done is basically your kind of DNA blueprint. It doesn't mean that you will 
express those genes. It will depend on your environment. If you, let's say, have uh, a DNA mutation that is not allowing you to absorb B12 really well, and you really challenge that by you know, having a vegan diet and not supplementing with B12, or having a very um, stressful lifestyle or some other aspects that will require more B12 usage by the body, then this gene will turn on and will uh, epigenetically express, let's say, and which will lead to uh, other problems that can manifest as uh, you know, depression or um, even autism and things like that. Is that explainable? Yeah, so, so basically what you're saying is, is this genetic test can show a couple of things. One, what your predispositions might be for, mm -hmm. and also what environmental aspects could be causing the the expression of that or preventing the expression of that, is that right? Uh, well, it, won't, it, won't show, it won't show what experimental, uh, uh, environmental aspects will uh, change person's expression or not, but it will show um, mutations in certain enzymes that will activate or deactivate pathways in the huge, you know, big metabolic cycle, the methylation cycle. And if you have problems in that methylation cycle, how you usually explain it to people is like, you have a house, that's your body, and you know, we have whole bunch of garbage in it, <laughs> you know, like heavy metals, the toxins, byproducts of, you know, bacteria or yeast or anything like this, or just metabolic waste, you know, just normal metabolic waste from just living day-to-day -day life. And you have a door in a house, and it's, this door is the revolving door. So things go in there, and if the revolving door is not working right, they just come back in. So this is what the methylation cycle is like. You know, if you have that revolving door broken, the things that are not supposed to be in the body that you have defenses against or you have detoxification systems for will end up back in the body and they will cause, cause problems. They will pile up in, in the cells or deep fat tissues or anything like that. So the uh, methylation cycle is governed by different enzymes and that, that revolving door is governed by different enzymes. And those enzymes, uh, we can uh, genetically test whether they're effective or not. If they're not effective and there's uh, problems with those enzymes, then, then the revolved door, that revolved door is not working really well and all the garbage ends up back in our house. So once we see those enzymes and we know that there is problems with those specific enzymes, we can optimize that pathway and make that door work really well so the body can take the garbage out of the house, <laughs> out, of your, out of your systems, and you end up with a better uh, functioning system. So uh, ideally, uh, pretty much you can see the relation between your DNA and enzymes and <clears throat> optimizing both your diet or your enzyme, you know, supplementing enzymes or that sort of stuff can have an influence on these type of things? Uh, absolutely. Uh, not just supplementing with enzymes, but supplementing with cofactors too, you know, like that help those enzymes work. You know, things like B12 vitamin or folate, uh, which, you know, we have a huge uh, um, problem nowadays. A lot of people being told that they need to take folic acid, you know, when they are pregnant. And folic acid is a synthetic form of folate that makes that whole methylation cycle work really well. And uh, unfortunately, it docks in the places where the folate is supposed to be, and that methylation cycle just stops working. So it's, again, it was seeing the methylation cycle from a DNA point of view, seeing where those mutations are, we can correct uh, those problems and prevent, you know, like the revolving door from being broken. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, the future, I know this is a relatively new field, and it's kind of expanding rapidly. So. What do you see happening in this? Where do you think, where do you see this going over the long term? Uh, well, there is lots of potentials. There's different companies developing packages to test again for um, a perfect diets, you know, for the person based on their DNA makeup. Uh, also seeing um, <clears throat> different disease that you might be predispositioned to and starting to work um, towards preventing them way before they even start manifesting, you know, let's say in your 20s or 30s, you know, starting to supplement with something that you're genetically predispositioned for to develop in 60s or 70s, let's say. And also, um, new type of testing, um, nutrigenomic testing, is used by certain practitioners uh, to treat uh, kids with autism, you know, uh, to prevent some behavioral problems, you know, and uh, some of the uh, psychiatrists are using it now to correct the methylation cycle based on DNA uh, to help people with uh, their mental state. So there is a lot of potential for this, and uh, especially in, um, in the field of uh, dietary and nutritional supplementation. Wow, that's amazing. So um, how do you do a test? Do they got to like 
take a piece of your tissue or uh, what, how does it well, work? This, uh, no, uh, there's uh, two types of DNA testing available nowadays. The easiest one is saliva. You basically get a little kit, you spit into the uh, tube and then get sent back and the test being sent back to you, the practitioner, and then you work with the practitioner to read it and to identify whether you're epigenetically expressing the certain genes that you are seeing on the test um, or certain mutations that you're seeing in your enzymes. And um, the other type of testing is uh, blood testing. So basically the same thing. You get blood collected and it's uh, looked at by the lab. And it's a little bit more um, precise and usually used by uh, more, um, more difficult situations like uh, kids with autism because those uh, working with kids is such a um, big um, undertaking because there's so many different parts that you have to take into account. So it's better to be more precise with that. And it's also a um, test for more different types of uh, SNPs, the different uh, types of enzymes. Uh, so it's more correct, but it's not as necessary if you're just trying to optimize your health and don't have a very you know, uh, persisting problem like autism or let's say chronic fatigue or um, Lyme's disease or something like that that you can't figure out. So usually I just recommend doing a saliva test because it's uh, more um, cost effective and it gives you enough information to correct your diet and to correct your lifestyle. Now is this the kind of test that you would get with your medical doctor or an ND or, or is there only a special field of person that's uh, doing this? You know a, a lot of uh, AMDs and ANDs are not aware as much uh, about this testing. Um, usually uh, doctors in functional medicine again uh, some of the ANDs uh, and nutritionists that are dealing specifically again with autism, it became very popular um, when his, uh, one of the doctors, uh, Amy Yasko, started treating kids with autism based on a, a genomic profile, or um, uh, doctors that are really interested in gaining Lyme disease or chronic fatigue or you know uh, problems that are association, associated, associated with uh, detoxification cycle and uh, methylation cycle. So it's a, it's a unique and uh, small field right now, but it's growing. And I think it be, will become more um, prevalent in the future. But right now, there's only spe sp uh, specific um, practitioners that are using it. Wow, that's really, really exciting. So um, I, I want to thank you for joining us today and sharing with okay. us about genetic testing. I know this is, I mean, it's obviously a fairly complicated field. And it's great to have you know, those team members that allow you to kind of get these things. And of course, if you're suffering from one of those conditions that you were for that may be very complicated or genetically related, this would probably be the test for you. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So, um, wow. I, I learned a lot today. I know it was, we only just scratched the surface there, but that kind of, uh, that kind of, we've gone through these last few series of all about testing and the importance of testing and re recognize this that Virtually every person that has achieved the highest levels of performance in any area follows some kind of testing program and gets the right professional to give them the feedback, not just from one, but maybe from several different professionals so you can get a holistic picture. Remember that Jedi Council of getting the whole look of the whole picture of what's going on because you never know what that piece is going to be that's going to take you to the next level. So I want to thank Katrine for joining us. I want to thank you for staying here for this lesson and find out this exciting and expanding field, be sure to check back to the Bioptimizer website where we'll be going through a lot more of this information and keeping you up to date on the latest developments in this incredible field. And I want to invite you to come back tomorrow because tomorrow is the last lesson. It's you've made you're almost there. It's like one more to go. So this one is going to really blow your socks off. It's something that's really coming back and taking all from the head putting it in a heart, and I just want to thank you for being here for so long. I want to thank Katrine and for all the Bioptimizer team that's involved in our testing procedure. We're expanding this daily, so if you're looking for testing, go to our site. And again, we'll see you on the next lesson. It's the last one.